If matrix A is similar to matrix B, this means that B can be rewritten as P inverse AP, where P is some invertible matrix. This is called a conjugacy. This can only occur between two square matrices of the same size. What do these similar matrices have in common? They have the same determinant, the same rank, or number of leading ones. They have the same trace. The trace is the sum of the diagonal entries. They also have the same characteristic polynomial, which means they have the same eigenvalues, but generally they have different eigenvectors, as they aren't usually the exact same matrix. Just a reminder that the characteristic polynomial is the determinant of lambda times the identity matrix minus the matrix A. But the opposite is not true. Sharing all these properties doesn't imply similarity. To prove similarity, you have to actually find this invertible P. Next, let's go over some properties of similarity. First, it's reflexive. This means that square matrices are similar with themselves. It's also symmetric, meaning if A is similar to B, then B is similar to A. And lastly, transitive. If A is similar to B and B is similar to C, A is similar to C. Let's see why these work. If A is similar to A, this means that A is P inverse AP. How could we rewrite this to isolate the opposite A? If we multiply this side by P and this side by P inverse, those would cancel out. We'd be left with just A. Let's do that. We get P A P inverse equals A. And just a reminder, this is because any invertible matrix times its inverse is the identity matrix. We want the inverse matrix on the left. So to do that, let's say that Q is our matrix. Q is P inverse. Then on the left, we would have to write Q inverse, then A, and then just Q. So we're done. Next, if A is similar to B, what does this mean? B can be rewritten as P inverse AP. Now let's isolate A so we can show the opposite direction. To do that, let's multiply by P on the left and P inverse on the right. Again, we want the inverse on the left, Q inverse BQ equals our matrix A. And we've shown symmetry. Lastly, if A is similar to B and B is similar to C, let's write out what that means. Our goal is to write C as, let's say, R for some other invertible matrix, AR. Since we want A in the middle, let's plug in our expression for B. Now we can factor out the negative one out of the first two matrices. When we factor this out, the matrices actually switch order. So it becomes PQ, A, PQ, and PQ is our invertible matrix. We could rewrite this as R if we wanted, but it doesn't really matter. We have shown this is transitive. We also have some additional properties. If A is similar to B, then A transpose is similar to B transpose. Let's show why this is true. First of all, let's write out what A is similar to B means. B can be written as P inverse AP. Then let's transpose both sides similar to taking the inverse of multiple matrices. When we have the transposition of multiple matrices, the order switches. We can also switch the order of the transpose and the inverse operation. And now we can say our invertible matrix Q is equal to P transpose inverse. This would mean that B transpose equals Q inverse ATQ which is exactly what we wanted. Next, to show the inverses are similar, this is easier. We can first take the inverse of both sides. When we apply the inverse, we switch the order of the matrices. P inverse inverse is just itself. And we already have everything in the right order, so we're done. Lastly, A to an exponent K, when K is equal to or greater than one, is similar to B to that same exponent. We know that A is similar to B, so let's write what that means. And now let's put both sides to the exponent K. Now, what would this mean exactly? Let's make a side note. If we had P inverse AP times P inverse AP times P inverse AP K times, what would happen? We would have P and P inverse, they cancel out. P and P inverse, they cancel out. P and the next P inverse cancel out. We're going to be left with P inverse A to the exponent K P. And we've shown that this property is true. Let's show that these two matrices are not similar. The first one's A and the second one's B. Let's start with trace since that's the easiest. This means adding the elements on the diagonal. So one plus four and the trace of B is also five. Okay, next let's check the determinant. 
Remember that for a two by two matrix, the determinant is the product of the elements on the diagonal minus the product of the elements on the anti-diagonal. So we have one times four minus three times two, and the determinant of matrix B is six minus four, positive two. Because the determinants are not equal, these matrices cannot be similar. We don't even have to bother checking the rank or the characteristic polynomials. But to find the rank, all we would have to do is reduce each of these matrices and see if they both have the same number of leading ones. 